the whole question of balance is often confused because you see people ten have a tendency to think of the walking as in a rather simplified manner sort of having it in a way with support and without support so like with support that's one thing and then so which is considered to be sort of bad and without support that's good so as the ultimate outcome that's true however it's important to understand there is a number of components to consider and all of those components they have to be like built and addressed in a rather distinct manner so let's try to understand the key things so i wouldn't go in any particular order but i will go up and down so part one that's the vestibular function right so you see this is the vestibular control namely the ability to correctly perceive the position of the head and the brain in space itself from which the reference goes towards the everything external external space you know orienting yourself and like connecting it with the body so that's the important part right so you see and then the internal vestibular part and it connects through the eyeballs and the ear and the inner ear connect and connects with the kinesthetic body via the neck so that's the level one okay let's kind of move to the bottom and say well what else do we need here we need the connection to the ground so the feet has to produce accurate information from the ground have to produce proper grip so that's what is called the contact mechanics so this is the management and the control of the contact with the floor think about it it's like if you're sliding then or slipping everything else goes off so that's the level number one so we get back here to the middle and say what happens in the middle in the middle this is where you have the center of mass so this center of mass is what you're carrying in space according to the formulas of physics so the center of mass if it's falling then it's the absent control so you'll be able you should be able to control the position of the center of mass now the center of mass is oscillating so it's moving you know from side to side from front to back and it's of course having some rotations there but it's kind of happening around this central plane so physically that would be around the pelvis so you have to be able to keep the head in place keep the feet in place and have the control of the center of mass in between so these are these kind of bigger uh, waves right so then the component number four would be the connection through the spine right so the connection through the spine is the one that goes with the undulations right so you see i don't draw it very nicely but these are the waves that are going through the spine what is the important thing about the waves that are going through the spine that's kind of the being the primarily ligamentous connection that works simultaneously as a two-way street so what do i mean by two-way street because you see you have soft feet and you have the weight of the you know of the body so therefore in that sense the body kind of presses down and the reaction force from the feet comes up so therefore it's a, always a two things like two managements top over the bottom and bottom under the top so what is the unique property of the ligamentous connections within the spine is the ability to unify them so it's a 
So the ligaments are capable of carrying this load and doing it in a tensional manner simultaneously. So, and it does do so via the waves, which are called the undulations. So that's number four. Then comes the number five, in no particular order. These are the legs. So the legs, they have to be able to support. You might say, well, I mean, isn't it obvious that the legs are supposed to do the support? No, it's not. Because again, we have to remember that the system is tensional, right? And that means that in, I explained it like many years ago in uh, the videos about the secrets of walking so that we, when you have to look at it, you have to think of the bicycle wheel, the bicycle wheel as the tensional support, which is based on this kind of wires. And for the bicycle wheel, any load from the bottom is a compression that introduces the slack and therefore introduces the uncontrol. You know, like it's the uh, it's uh, uncontrol, it's the weakness, it's the slack. So you need to have sufficient consolidation there in order to be able to control. And this is particularly important for the level of the hip joint. Why? Because there is a greatest slack in the hip joint, right? So you see, when we look at the joint capsule itself, it has the most of the potential mobility and so on. So when there is a slack there, then, you know, you're not really using the legs as support. You actually have to hold the legs from above. Otherwise, they have a tendency to buckle and they are a liability rather than a benefit. And the number six, that's the control of the swaying or tilting. So that's like a falling tree, right? So you see the tree itself, which if you draw the tree, right? So you see, and there is a wind. So the tree can sway between top and bottom. Now, this is the sixth. This is the number six. And that's the one which sort of comes in that direct interaction with the vestibular part. Because if the body has a tendency to sway, what happens? The number one, the vestibular system, reports it as a panic. You know, like it reports, well, I'm, I am falling. So therefore, what does it do? It brings the whole tone up. It switches on the fight or flight response and bring the tone up. So the key idea that we have to understand that the number six swaying is the part that comes last. So if you try to do the number six, like let go of the supports, you do it at the expense of everything from one to five. So because then the, the body reacts, you know, like you get into the fight or flight response, the muscle tone goes up, the legs are not working in the support, they have to be held from the, from the top, the center of mass mobility is, is lost. So instead of moving forward, you know, like oscillating in a, in a plane, it goes into the lock. The spine, instead of working in the, undulate, uh, in the undulation wave-like fashion and going through the ligaments, then you've got the paravertebral muscles like locking it from the side. The feet, they spread and hook onto the ground instead of getting the proper support. And, you know, everything gets lost. So the removal of the support is the final phase. So what is my biggest point here? Don't rush with it. It's not possible to train because this is something very difficult to predict. This relationship and what kind of triggers happen in the brain between this number one and number six. Because it just has this possibility of switching the tone. So, what does it mean? You've seen this paradox, right? And Parents often ask me about how come that, I mean, I give her like a finger or just a point 
and then she's fine. You know, like the quality improves dramatically. So that's your secret. So even the minimal support that prevents swaying, this tree-like swaying from top to bottom is essential. So in order to let go of it, you want to actually use this number six, this support at that level and calm down the number one, the vestibular part, so that you have the time and the opportunity so the person builds the experiences, builds the connections, builds the accuracy for everything from two, three, and f two, three, four, and five. So that's really the central logic of the whole thing. So that's what has to be understood very, very clearly about the phases. So in that sense, you can't really tell when you can turn the number six, when you hold this minimal anti-swaying support off. So that's very, very important. So that's why, you know, that's one of the key mistakes and one of the key problems of the so-called training. They say, oh, you know what, she can somehow manage without the, uh, without the support. So they take the number six away, but then everything else gets ruined. So that's really the most important understanding about standing and about the way how the whole thing works there. So that's really the key. So once we understood this, we can move further to the details.